I'm Diasha. In our previous lesson, we learned that not all acids and bases are the same. We examined soluble bases that we call alkalis. These chemicals form when metal oxides of group 1 dissolve in water. Remember that it is these alkalis, lithium hydroxide, sodium hydroxide and potassium hydroxide that are strong bases. The other metal oxides are weak bases. These metal oxides are not soluble and do not turn red litmus paper blue as quickly as the strong bases do. We also looked at acids and found that there are strong and weak acids. There are three strong acids you need to know. They are hydrochloric acid, nitric acid and sulfuric acid. Now, at the end of the previous lesson, I introduced you to some other words that describe different types of acids and bases. We used the word dilute and concentrated. I asked you to complete a task using these ideas. Let's look at some typical answers now. A strong concentrated acid. This could be either hydrochloric acid, nitric acid, or sulfuric acid that does not have a lot of water added to it. A weak dilute acid. In this example, you could choose any acid that is not strong, like vinegar or lemon juice, and make sure that you add this acid to lots of water. A weak concentrated base. A metal oxide not in group 1 that has little water and lots of base. So for example, calcium oxide in a small amount of water. A strong dilute alkali. The choice here is limited to one of the three alkalis from group 1. Either potassium hydroxide, lithium hydroxide or sodium hydroxide. The solution of these alkalis must be diluted with lots of water. I hope you got those answers correct. Let's look at our outcomes for today. By the end of today's lesson, you will be able to explain the pH scale and use the pH scale and universal indicator to analyze samples. In order to compare and measure how dilute an acid or base is, chemists define concentration as the number of moles of acid or base divided by the volume of solution. We can write this as a simple formula. C equals N divided by V. The units of concentration are important to know. They are moles per decimeter cubed, written as M O L dot D M to the minus 3. This really means moles of acid or base per litre of solution. There is also a shorthand symbol for this unit. Instead of writing mole per decimeter cubed, chemists write capital M. This capital M stands for molar. What is important to know is that a 0, 5 mole per decimeter cubed solution of sodium hydroxide can be written as 0, 5 molar. Oh hi Diasha, come and have a look what I'm doing. I'm making a solution of sodium hydroxide but I want to know what the concentration of the solution is. So I'm weighing out the solute. I'm weighing exactly 0, 0,4 grams of sodium hydroxide. I'm then going to take this weighed solution sample and transfer it into this volumetric flask using a funnel. Making sure that all the crystals go into the funnel 
And now I'm going to wash the funnel down with some distilled water. Of course, we know that sodium hydroxide dissolves very easily. I add just a little bit, and then I'm going to swirl. Right, all the crystals are now dissolved, and I'm going to add in the rest of the water. This is the tricky part. I need to add just enough water to this solution so that it gets up to the measuring line. Exactly 250 mils. Slowly, slowly, slowly. Now you can see the meniscus of the solution is almost on the line. We've got our solution of 250 mils with a mass of 0 0,4 grams of solute. Let's go and work out the concentration. Let's write down what we know. The mass of our weighed sample was 0 0,4 grams of the solute sodium hydroxide. To convert this mass into moles, we're going to use the formula N is equal to M divided by capital M, the relative atomic mass or molar mass. Let's work that out here. The molar mass of sodium hydroxide, we get these values from the periodic table. Sodium is 23 plus 16 for oxygen plus 1 for hydrogen. This gives us a molar mass of 40 grams per mole. Right, let's substitute into the formula. 0, 0,4 grams divided by 40 gives us an answer of 0, 0,01 moles. Now, to find concentration, we use the formula Diascher told us about, the number of moles of solute divided by the volume of solution. Our volume of solution was 250 centimeters cubed. But we need to convert these to decimeters cubed by dividing by a thousand. So it's 0, 0,25 decimeters cubed. Substitute the number of moles of solute, 0, 0,01, divided by 0, 0,25 and we get a final answer for our concentration of 0, 0,04 moles per decimeter cubed. Remember, we can also call this 0, 0,04 molar. Back to you, Diasha. Here, I have two solutions of sodium hydroxide with their concentrations marked on them. The first solution has a concentration of 0, 0,1 molar and the second, 0, 0,04 molar. Now remember that even though both these solutions are diluted, they are still both solutions of a strong base. By diluting the alkali, there is a difference between the samples. But when I test them, I notice that they both turn pink litmus blue. Now, there must be a better way to indicate how basic or acidic solutions are. We will need a better indicator to show us this difference. When we used our natural indicators, you notice that not all indicators have the same colors in acidic and basic solutions. This gave chemists the idea of combining different chemicals that change color when there are even small changes in acidity. They called this indicator a universal indicator. This indicator can be used as either a paper indicator, like the litmus paper we have been using, or as a liquid that can be added to solution. This liquid can only be used when the solutions being tested are colorless. Let's take a look now at how sensitive this universal indicator actually is. I'm going to add a few drops to each sample of the sodium hydroxide solutions I prepared earlier.
Look here. The 0, 1 molar solution has turned a darker purple, while the 0, 0, 4 molar solution is a lighter purple. This color change now gives us a way of measuring small changes in acidity. This indicator is the tool we can use to develop a range of different levels of acidity. Now before we use it to do some more testing, we need to link this indicator to a scale scientists have developed in order to link color changes on the indicator to a number. This scale for measuring acidity is called the pH scale. It starts at zero and runs through to 14. You may be wondering why the scale is called pH. Well, when scientists were developing theories about why some things are acids and others are neutral or basic, they noticed that in acids the number of hydrogen ions was very high. A hydrogen ion is actually a hydrogen atom without its electron. This explains why the scale is called pH. There is a mathematical relationship between the pH value and the hydrogen ion concentration that may seem strange at first, but I'll try to simplify it for you. When the concentration of hydrogen ions is high, the substance is acidic and the pH value will be low. Strong concentrated acids have pH values of 0 or 1. Weak acids can have pH values of 4 or even 5. Neutral substances, like water, have a pH of 7. When the hydrogen ion concentration decreases, the substance is now a base and the pH values will now be above 7. Weak bases have pH values of 8 or 9, while strong concentrated alkalis have pH values of 13 or 14. Now the best thing about universal indicator is that it links directly to the pH scale. So we can use the paper or the liquid indicator, check the color and read off the indicator. Let's use this indicator to test our original solutions used in lesson 1. Remember, we showed you that these solutions were acids and that this was a base. But now we can see how acidic or basic each substance is. Here I have added a few drops of universal indicator. In the first test tube, you can see the solution is a reddish color. Using the reference chart, you can read off the pH as 1. Now, for today's task, I want you to draw up a table like this one. Watch each test tube shown to you and then use the indicator reference strip on the screen to determine what the pH of each solution is. Remember to record your information in a table. Now before I have to say goodbye, let's take one last look at the test tubes to help you compile your table. From this lesson, I'm sure you can see that there are not just three categories, acid, neutral and bases, but there is a whole range of acidity levels. This pH scale can be measured using electronic instruments too. Here is a pH sensor that we use to check everyday substances. We will use this to check your results at the beginning of the next lesson. Make sure you complete your task because practice makes perfect. Till we meet again, goodbye. Thank <laughs> you.